Learning Objectives At the end of this module, we will be able to Understand the meaning and types of internal trade Identify the types of retail trading Know the significance of goods and services tax Explain the importance of associations and organizations in promoting trade Introduction of Internal Trade Introduction Trade involves buying and selling of goods and services. It is necessary for production and consumption of new goods and services. Its importance has grown in the modern times. Based on the location of buyers and sellers of goods and services, trade is divided into internal and external trade. When trade is done within a country, it is called internal trade. If done between countries, it is called external trade. Internal trade Internal trade refers to buying and selling of goods and services within the boundaries of a nation, irrespective of the many ways in which it is done. In internal trade, there is no charging of import or customs duty on the products. This is because the products are produced within the country for domestic consumption. Wholesale and retail trade are the two components of internal trade. Wholesale trade Large geographical area makes it difficult for producers to distribute their goods and services for consumers. Therefore, the producers sell large quantities of their products to wholesalers who in turn sell them to either retailers or consumers directly. This usage of intermediary to distribute goods and services is known as wholesale trade. Retail trade On the other hand, retail trade involves buying of goods in small quantities and selling them to the end consumers. In the process of exchange of goods and services, both wholesalers and retailers are important. Wholesale Trade and Services of Wholesalers Large quantities of goods and services that are sold to retailers, merchants, industries, etc., but not to final consumers, are known as wholesaling. The wholesalers are a bridge between the producers and the retailers. Their activities involve grading, packaging, transporting, distributing, etc. The functions of wholesalers have two sections, service to manufacturers and service to retailers. Service to manufacturers, facilitating large-scale production. Wholesalers collect and aggregate small orders from retailers. This enables the manufacturer to produce goods on large scale. Bearing risk Wholesalers take the risk of theft, damage, pilferage, etc. in the process of collecting, storing, transporting and distributing goods. Financial Assistance They pay in cash and at times in advance for the goods purchased from the manufacturer, thereby providing financial assistance. Expert Advice Being the eyes and ears of the market, wholesalers advise the manufacturers regarding customer preferences, market demand, etc. Help in Marketing Functions Their large distribution network helps in marketing the product, thereby helping the manufacturers. Facilitate production continuity. Their year round purchasing of goods allows manufacturers to produce continuously. Storage Wholesalers hold their goods in godowns and warehouses as soon as they are produced. Thus, manufacturers do not need large storage space. Services to retailers Availability of goods. Wholesalers make diverse products available to the retailers and help them avoid the need to contact various producers. Marketing Support 
wholesalers undertake various marketing activities that induce demand from customers which benefits the retailers grant of credit they provide credit support for the purchase of goods to the retailers who have money shortage specialized knowledge they pass their knowledge on products to the retailers also they give advice to the retailers to help improve their stores and sales risk sharing by purchasing goods in bulk the wholesaler shares the risk of retailers who are incapable of handling risks like theft price and demand fluctuations pilferage etc retail trade and services of retailers retail trade retailers sell products to the final consumers how and where this selling is made does not matter till it is sold to the final consumers services of retailers services to manufacturers and wholesalers help in distribution of goods they make the products of the manufacturers and wholesalers reach the final consumers who are scattered across geographical area personal selling retailers undertake personal selling of consumer goods which help the manufacturers and wholesalers enabling large scale operations retailers help manufacturers and wholesalers to undertake large scale operations by undertaking the function of selling directly to the consumers collecting market information being in direct contact with the consumers they collect important information like the preferences tastes and demands of the consumers which are used while taking marketing decisions help in promotion they play a vital role in promoting sales of the products by participating in the various promotional activities undertaken by the producers and wholesalers services to consumers regular availability of products retailers ensure that products are regularly available for the consumers new products information by displaying new products and by sharing of information on new products retailers keep the consumers up to date and help them in making buying decisions convenience in buying retailers make the purchasing of goods easier to consumers by being close to their residential areas and open for long hours wide selection a wide variety of products are kept by the retailers enabling consumers to make a choice after sale services they take after sale services like home delivery providing spare parts attending to customer needs etc this helps in repeat purchasing of products provide credit facilities they provide credit to regular customers and help them increase their standard of living types of retail trading itinerant retailers types of retail trading retail trade can be classified based on the size of the business type of ownership and merchandise sold the common classification is based on the basis of having a fixed place for business the classification is itinerant retailers and fixed shop retailers itinerant retailers they have no specific place to do business they are mostly on the move from place to place in search of customers characteristics they are small and have limited resources to operate they generally sell consumer goods they make goods available at the consumer's doorstep they keep limited inventory common itinerant retailers in india peddlers and hawkers these petty traders carry their goods on a bicycle push carts on their heads etc and move from place to place they are commonly found in streets at exhibitions and melas in front of schools etc selling low value goods they provide convenience service to customers but their goods are often not reliable for quality market traders these are small retailers dealing in low value goods for low income groups and operate in a specific area on a particular day 
street traders these small traders are often found in busy areas with large population flow like bus stands and railway stations they deal in goods of common use like toiletries stationery books etc cheap jacks they are petty retailers with independent shops but operate for a temporary period in the business locality they change the areas based on its potentiality but not frequently types of retail trading fixed shop retailers fixed shop retailers they have a permanent place to do business and are the most common type of retailing characteristics their scale of operations is large compared to itinerant retailers the product range is large including both consumer durable and non consumer durables consumers trust them more as they are capable of providing services like home delivery repairing etc types based on size there are two types a small shopkeepers b large retailers fixed shop small retailers general stores located in residential areas and local markets these stores sell common goods of day to day use like confectionery stationery toiletries etc the success of these stores are dependent on the owner specialty shops these stores are popular in urban areas they sell a specific line of products for example a garment specialty shop sells products related to garments only these stores are located in a place where customers can be attracted in large number street stall holders they are commonly found at the corner of the streets and places where traffic flow is high inventory is low offer convenient service to customers and the business place is often small in size second hand goods shop these are resellers of used goods like books furniture and automobiles etc which are sold at lower prices some shops might sell antique goods at higher prices as they are historically significant they are commonly found at street crossings with limited infrastructure fixed shop large stores one departmental stores these are large retail facilities with various goods arranged in different departments medicines groceries toiletries confectioneries etc important feature modern departmental stores include restaurants restrooms etc for high class customers located in strategic places to attract large customers they are formed as a joint stock company with board of directors and various managers goods are directly purchased from manufacturers and stored in their own warehouses advantages they attract large number of customers makes available diverse products services like home delivery providing credit etc purchasing goods on a large scale is possible limitations personal attention to customers is not possible high operating costs and high prices on goods possibility of loss is high inconvenient to access the stores when in emergency chain stores or multiple stores these are shops of similar appearance set up by manufacturers or intermediaries in multiple locations the shops involve same merchandise strategies with aim for rapid sales important features located in populous areas for the convenience of the customers merchandise is distributed by the head office to the chain stores branch manager is the key person and all the stores are controlled by the head office prices are fixed and cash earned is deposited in the banks daily an inspector is appointed to supervise stores advantage 1 economies of scale is possible 2 middlemen are eliminated 
sales is on cash basis which leads to no bad debts. 4. Goods are transferred based on demand in the locality. 5. Losses at one shop are covered by profits from another shop. 6. The cost of running the business is low. 7. Flexibility in shutting or shifting a shop in case of losses. Limitations Goods available in these shops are limited to a particular range. Store operators are disinterested in increasing sales as they have to follow instructions from the head office. This in turn leads to lack of personal attention to customers. When demand for the merchandise changes, huge losses may be incurred due to the existing stock. Fixed shop, large stores, 2. Mail order houses. This involves retail trade through the mail. There is negligible contact between buyers and sellers in this trade. Advertisements are the major source of information for the customers regarding the products. Orders are made through mail and payments are done in advance or after goods are delivered. Through this, only goods that can be graded, standardized, transported, have demand etc. can be sold. Advantages Less capital is required to start as there is no need for large infrastructure. Middlemen are eliminated. Payment is received in advance and hence no debts. It can serve a large number of people. Consumers receive the goods at their doorstep. Limitations It is devoid of any personal contact between the buyers and sellers. The cost of promoting goods through advertisements is high. Service after sales is not possible. Credit facilities are not available. At times, delivery of goods may get delayed. There is the possibility of cheating by the traders. Consumer Cooperative Store These are formed by the consumers themselves to cut down the prices of goods by procuring them directly from the manufacturers. The members of the store receive a bonus when profits are earned. As per the Cooperative Societies Act, at least 10 people must come together to start a consumer cooperative. Advantages It can be formed easily. The liability on the members is limited to the capital they invested. Management committees maintain the cooperatives democratically. Prices of goods are normally lower. Sales are done through cash. Stores are located at convenient places. Limitations Members do not take initiative to increase sales. Money raised through members are insufficient to scale the business. Management of the stores lack expertise in handling the stores. Fixed shop Large stores 3. Supermarkets Here retailing is done on the basis of affordable prices, self-service, and availability of large variety of goods. The difference between a departmental store and a supermarket is that facilities like home delivery, providing credit, etc. are not available in the latter. Key characteristics Consists of food items, groceries and non-food convenience goods. Customers can fulfill their buying needs under one roof. Through the principle of self-service, Supermarkets reduce costs. Prices of goods are less here due to bulk purchasing, low profits and lower operating costs. Advantages Low cost and availability of goods at a single place. Normally located in the central areas of a city. Business is based on cash and loss due to debts is minimal. Can be operated at a large scale. Limitations they do not provide credit. Being self-serviced, no personal attachment with the customer. Overhead expenses are high. Capital requirement for starting a supermarket is high. Vending machines. Through these machines, many consumables can be sold. These are coin-operated with latest machines 
excepting currency notes. Apart from consumables, they provide banking services in the form of automated teller machines, ATMs. They disperse and collect cash. They are normally used for selling high turnover items like pre-packed food products. The limitation of this retailed trade include unable to return goods, special packaging requirement for products, reliability of machines, etc. Goods and Services Tax GST. It makes for a unified tax structure on goods and services across the country. The tax is being implemented since July 1, 2017. It replaced multiple indirect taxes and levied a unified tax on goods and services supplied by manufacturers to the consumers. GST is expected to increase tax compliance, reduce tax on tax, tax evasion, and increase tax revenues. It eased the process of filing tax returns and assessments. It has two components, Central GST, CGST, and State GST, SGST. Tax is calculated by summing the both at the value addition stage of a product and through tax credit mechanism, the tax levied on inputs in the process of value is addition is offset. In the end, the final supplier of the product passes on the GST to the customers. The tax credit mechanism is to avoid cascading effect of tax, tax on tax, and reduce prices on goods. GST benefits. Overall tax burden is reduced. There are no hidden taxes. Unified national market for goods and services. Choice for customers widens. Less taxation means more money in the hands of people. Generates more employment. Key features of GST. Spread across the country. It is levied on supply of goods instead of manufacture of goods. It is destination-based consumption tax. An interstate GST is levied on transport of goods across states. There are four tax slabs, 5%, 12%, 18% and 28%. Role of Commerce and Industry Associations in Promotion of Internal Trade To promote internal trade, many associations and organizations are formed. Associated Chamber of Commerce and Industry, ESOCHAM, Confederation of Indian Industry, CII, and Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FICI, are some of them. They interact with the government to help frame policies, reduce obstacles to internal trade, increase transparency in processes, streamline tax structure, etc. Some of their interventions are 1. Interstate Movement of Goods They help in registering of vehicles for interstate transport, erecting transport infrastructure, etc. 2. Octroi and other local level They help urban local bodies and states in collecting octroi and other taxes. 3. Harmonization of sales tax structure and value-added tax they see that there is harmony in sales tax across states. Uniform rates promote internal trade. 4. Marketing of agro-products and related issues Agriculture associations help promote trade in agricultural products. They aid in streamlining subsidies, marketing agro-products, etc. 5. Weights and measures and prevention of duplication brands to protect consumers' and traders' interest, the Chamber of Commerce intervene in framing laws related to weights and measures. They also see that those in violation of these laws are punished. 6. Excise Duty The excise policy of government determines the prices of goods. The Chamber of Commerce see that the policy is rationally crafted. 7. Promoting Sound Infrastructure infrastructure like roads, railways, ports, electricity, etc. is important in promoting internal trade. The associations, by interacting with the government, see that these are developed.
8. Labor Legislation The associations see that the labor laws of the country are not restrictive and promote the activities of industries and thereby generate employment. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Internal trade involves selling and buying of goods within the boundaries of the country. Wholesale traders act as a bridge between manufacturers and consumers, purchase goods in large quantities and make them available for consumers from wider geographical area. Retailers sell products to the final consumers. How and where this selling is made does not matter till it is sold to the final consumers. GST is expected to increase tax compliance, reduce tax on tax, tax evasion and increase tax revenues. It eases the process of filing tax returns and assessments. There are four tax labs, 5%, 12%, 18% and 28%. To promote internal trade, many associations and organizations are formed. Associated Chamber of Commerce and Industry, ASOCHIM, Confederation of Indian Industry, CII, and Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, FICI, are some of them.